Now back to Moses. Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, obviously, I'm speaking English, and I don't know how to speak Hebrew, so I'm sounding out all of these words in Hebrew, but it's important for me to tell you that the Hebrew word for hear, which is how God starts this, uh, how Moses starts this verse, hear, O Israel, this word is Shema, and it's given in the imperative tense, and so it is saying it is imperative that you hear what I'm about to say to you. This is very, very important. Listen up. And then he says, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Remember what the very first commandment is. There are no other gods before me, right? So Moses tells them the very first commandment again. He's just reiterated all the commandments. And then he says, hey, listen. There's only one God. And he's telling them this because he knows that they're about to enter a new land with different people who worship different gods. And he doesn't want them to be persuaded to worship these other gods because that will be breaking the first and second commandment. And all the others hinge on this. If you break the first two, you're kind of in trouble. And so all of these other nations, they worship multiple gods. They have a sun god and a fertility god and a rain god and all these different gods that they pray to every time that they want something. And Moses is saying, there's only one God. If you need anything, you pray to him. He can do all the things. He has the power over all the things. He created all the things and he's in charge of all the things. So he's like, listen to this. There's only one God. He's the only one that's capable of taking care of you. He's the only one that's going to be able to provide for you in this new land. Don't forget that. And then the next thing he says is wonderful. He says, so love him. Love him with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love him with everything you have because he's the one that's going to be taking care of you when you get there. This is imperative. This is what is going to set them apart from all the other nations. Their God, their one true God, that is what makes them different. If they go in and they worship all of the gods that the other people worship, or even if they just have multiple gods that are different from the other people, they're still no different than them because they're worshiping multiple gods. He says, you know the secret. You are the chosen nation. They don't understand. They somehow got off track. They think there's multiple gods, but there's not. And so you will be distinguished among all the other people by your God. You'll be known by him. And so basically he's worthy of all of your obedience. And when you love him with everything you have, then you'll obey him because you'll know how significant he is. That's what their fathers saw there on that mountain that day, how significant and powerful he was. I want to read you a little bit of what the psalmist says in Psalm 89 about God. This tells you who God is and it will make you love him. Psalm 89, 5 through 18. The heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you steal them. You've broken Rahab in pieces as one who is slain. You've scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth is also yours. The world in all its fullness, you founded them. 
The North and the South, you created them. Tabor and Herman, rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong is your hand, and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name, they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness, they're exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our King to the Holy One of Israel. I wish I could go through that line by line and just, you know, talk about it further. But if I do that, this podcast will last forever. So I hope you absorb that. If not, go back and read Psalm 89 for yourselves. Now, this is Psalm 86, 8 through 13. There's none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you've made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. You not my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You've delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. When you hear how much God loves you and all the things that he's done for you, it makes you love him. 1 Timothy 1.17, to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. He's basically saying, I honor and glorify you because you are all these things, because you alone are wise, because you're eternal and invisible and my king. God is worthy of our love and obedience. He loves us more than anyone. He's more powerful than anyone. He can do anything that we need. And he's the wisest of all. So what Moses is asking of them here, God is worthy of that. Okay, so Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7, Moses continues and says, These words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. He's saying internalize these words. Make them a part of your everyday life and then teach them to your children so that they too can obey those words and then they too can live in the land for a long time. Talk about them all the time. Talk about them when you get up and when you lay down. All day long in everything you do, talk about him, act like him, teach his ways to your children. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. So he says, just like children imitate their parents, you imitate God. And if we imitate God to our children and then they imitate us, then they are imitating God. So we're teaching them to be like God by doing the things that God asks us to do. We should be so close to him that we reflect him to our children and to others. Moses continues, Deuteronomy 6, 8 to 9. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. He's stressing how important it is for them to remember his words. And the Jews took this very literally, this putting it on their hands and between their eyes. One of the reasons that they did that is because of what it says in Numbers 15 about how they're supposed to put tassels on the corners of their garments. And when they look at these tassels, it's supposed to remind them of God and why they're wearing those and keep them faithful to him. And so they knew that those things were an outward sign. And so they took this literally that they were supposed to put these words on their hands and uh, between their eyes. 
And so they made these boxes and then they put scriptures in them and then bound them to the wrists. They would also make containers that had scriptures on their doorposts and at their gates. So these are things that the Jews had and many Orthodox Jews still have today. And these boxes contain scriptures and one of the scriptures is called the Shema, which is the start of this verse, right? It is imperative that you hear this. And then Moses is saying, remember this. So they write down these verses, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, and put it in this box. And then they also have Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 21, and this passage in Numbers 15, 37 to 41. In these phylacteries and mezuzahs, and they would read these every morning and every night to remind them to keep these verses in front of their eyes. So they bind them on their hands and keep them in front of their eyes by reading them every single morning and every single night so they don't forget them. Now, most Christians today, we interpret these images as just a lesson that we are to keep his words with us. So whenever we do what it is that God asks for us to do, then they're on our hands, they're in our actions, and that we're supposed to keep them in front of our eyes and in our minds. Between our eyes is right there in our minds, right? And so keep them in front of our eyes, keep them in our minds, and let them be in our actions. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. My son, don't forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, it'll add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So we're not supposed to go our own way. We're supposed to follow God's laws. It will be beneficial to us. That's what this verse is saying. We should be a people that are identified as belonging to God. Listen to what it says in Joshua 24, 15. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose for yourself this day that whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose hand, land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what we all need to be able to say. And then Psalm 119 is all about God's word. And I'm just going to read you. It's the longest chapter of the whole Bible. <laughs> But, um, so I'm not going to read it to you, all of it, but I'm going to pick out a couple of verses. So Psalm 119, 10 says, with my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word is not stored in the Ark of the Covenant. It is stored in our hearts. That's how we don't sin against him. If we remember it, and we love him enough to follow it. Verse 12, blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the ways of your testimonies, I delight as much as in riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. This is about your mind and your eyes. I will delight in your statutes and I won't forget your words. And then verse 33, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I might keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. 35. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Again, your eyes. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. 
And then verse 140, your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. This is how we're supposed to feel about God's word, about his commandments, about his book. It's not a book of laws that overwhelm us, that make us feel like a failure. It's a book that we're supposed to love. It's a book that's supposed to compel us to love the Lord. Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablet of your heart. Not on a tablet that sits in the Ark of the Covenant, way distant from you. Don't even think about it. It's hidden. No, write them on the tablet of your heart that you might not sin against him. Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And so the message of Moses was, don't forget that God is the only God. Love him, follow him, and teach your children to follow him.